Hey guys, welcome to another video by Fish and Cheese. Today what we have for you is the setup guide for the Tenda AC6 router. So let me start off by saying I've been using the router now for about um, close to a week. The router has been awesome. Uh, speeds have increased on all my devices. Uh, man, the only complaint I have about the router is that uh, the Xbox seems to have poor Wi-Fi signal, even though I'm getting 100 bars with this one. Um, the Xbox seemed to have poor uh, poor Wi-Fi signal. So one of the things I did do was I made sure that since all of the devices in my, my household run on 5 gigahertz, I went ahead and disabled the 2.4 gigahertz band just so there's less interference. I'm not sure if that actually makes a difference, but for everyone at least. Um, but for myself, I definitely noticed that uh, there was less um, less uh, latency and there was less ping. So, hey, whatever it takes to make the gaming uh, a little bit better, the streaming a little bit better, I'll do it. All right, so whenever you first log into your router, how you're going to log into the router is go to this web address here. It's going to be 192.168.0.1. You're going to type that in once you're connected onto the Wi-Fi. When you're, when you're connected to the Wi-Fi, uh, the first thing you want to do is um, how to get connected to that Wi-Fi is look on the back of the router. It's going to give you the router's name, which is going to be Tenda, and then it's going to give you the password, the default password. Now, my router came without a default password enabled, so um, there was no real need for them to have the password written on the back of the modem. But just in case, that's how you'll find your password. So, this is the beginning page. Um, as you can see, it's connected to the internet because it's green. If it was not, it would be uh, grayed out. The router is connected, obviously. It's green. I have five devices online. I do not have a Wi-Fi extender, but if you did have a Wi-Fi extender, I'll quickly show you how to set that up. Let's go on over to the Wi-Fi settings. So, under Wi-Fi name and password, go ahead and click that. As you can see, I have the 2.4 gigahertz network disabled. You can enable it if you want. You can disable the 5 gigahertz if you want, however you want to do it, uh, whatever devices you have or however you want to set up your signal. The name comes from the factory name Tenda and Tenda 5G for each respective network. Uh, encryption mode recommended is WPA slash WPA2 PSK, but you can choose either one, and you also can choose none if you live in a remote area where no one will ever get on your Wi-Fi, I personally feel none would be the best. If I still lived out in the country, I would definitely go with none because it just increases your speeds that slightly more uh, or slightly more, which again, anything to get some more speed, I would definitely do. So for myself, I'm going to go ahead and leave the 2.4 gigahertz network disabled. You'll enter your password for whichever uh, Wi-Fi network you have enabled. If you have both enabled, you can enter the same password or enter different passwords. It's up to you. Then you hit the save button and continue. If you wanted to, real quick, if you wanted to have your networks enabled, but you let's say you live in an apartment, right? And there's a lot of Wi-Fi around you and you feel kind of insecure about someone trying to get on your network. If you want that added bit of security, what you could do is just click this little hide button. And what that'll do is it won't broadcast the Wi-Fi name. So if you remember your Wi-Fi name is Tenda underscore 5G, you would just type that into your device as other. And then it will find that network, ask for the password, and you can connect without having to broadcast your, uh, your uh, Wi-Fi name. So it also has Wi-Fi schedule, which allows you to set different times of the day that you want your Wi-Fi to be broadcast. Like, so let's say if you're working from uh, 6 to 2 in the afternoon and you don't want your Wi-Fi broadcast until 3 or 2.30 to, uh, you know, 6 in the morning, you know, the next day, you can definitely set up that schedule. That way, whenever you're not home, you brought, yeah, your Wi-Fi is not being broadcast and it will save you some energy. So that's a good feature to have just for... Um, power safety or power saving um, is concerned and also in case you're wondering or you're scared anyone may try to get on your, your network. Wireless repeating. So this is if you're going to have another um, re wireless repeater or if you're going to use an old router as a repeater. So what you do is you click enable. 
you can either use Wisp or Client plus AP. So you're gonna if you're using an old uh, router, you're gonna want to use Client AP. And what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to try and find the name of that Wi-Fi router through this list. Once you find it, click it, click save. Now what's gonna happen is whenever you go to log into that router, you're gonna have to input the password for that router. Not the router, not the Tenda, but whatever the other router is, you're gonna have to put the password for that router if they're different um, in, in order to be able to connect. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I did set it up once and it did work. The only problem is, is that uh, it's kind of, for my living conditions, it's kind of unnecessary. Uh, with this router um, in a centralized location, I am able to cover all four walls of my, um, my domicile and have no issues. So under channel and bandwidth, this is where you're going to set up your 2.4 gigahertz network or your 5 gigahertz network. So for the 2.4 gigahertz network, it can either be broadcast in 11B, G, or N. And then you can do mixed or you can just do the N. You choose your Wi-Fi channel. It goes all the way down to 11 for these bands. And then you can choose your Wi-Fi bandwidth. For the Wi-Fi bandwidth, if you have BG enabled and not N, you'll only be able to connect to the 20 um, bandwidth. If you have um, BGN or just N enabled, you can connect to 2040 or 2040. So let's go down to 5. So under 5 gigahertz, you have 11A, N, and AC mixed. Then you have just 11AC itself. So for 11AC um, mixed, you have channels from 36 all the way down to 61. Then your bandwidth is from 20, 40, 80, and then you can split it 20, 40, 80. So if all of your devices, if you know all of your devices are 11 um, AC compatible, what I would do is I would just go ahead and set 11 AC, and then I would just set the bandwidth on 80, just so you know you're getting uh, the least amount of traffic possible, especially if you live in like an apartment complex, that would be perfect. Now, if you're living in the country out of the middle of nowhere again, I would use 20 because 20 is um, 20. It's, it's a little bit less. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It penetrates a lot better. So if you're using 20, you're definitely going to get um, a little bit better speed in a less uh, congested environment. All right. Then you have your transmit power, and this is a big feature as well. As Again, I have the 2.4 gigahertz network uh, disabled, so I have the transmit on low to save power and to kind of keep the interference down a little bit. Um, I have the 5 gigahertz set to high, and, I mean, I have no issues, again, with coverage. You can set up WPS. There's a button on the back of the router that you click, and then you go to your device and try and connect through WPS. Um, it will ask for a, uh, some routers will ask for either a code or will automatically connect if you're trying to connect to that network. Um, I have not tested WPS on this router. Um, I don't ever use WPS. I just don't find it very secure to leave it enabled. Beamforming, you can enable it, disable it. Again, beamforming just sends a direct link or a direct stream of information to whatever device you're using to optimize performance. And you also have AP mode. All right, let's go over to guest network. Now, if you have people who are going to be coming over for Christmas, especially any holidays, and you want them to be able to use your Wi-Fi or you're setting up a, a small business or any business for that matter, and you want people to be able to use your Wi-Fi under guest, you can enable the guest network. You can name it. You can either name it uh, whatever your business is and then um, leave it at that, or you can name it your business and guest. Uh, for your home, you can leave it just like it is. Um, if there is no password, then leave it blank. If you want there to be a password, just make sure you let everyone know who's a guest, what the password is going to be, and then they'd be able to log on. If you want the password to expire, you can 
set the validity um four hours eight hours or always so what happens basically if you set it for four hours after the four hours the guest network will automatically shut off and then you have to come back to the settings to re-enable it when you re-enable it the password um the times i've used it the password sometimes is blank sometimes the password is still there um, it just really depends on uh, which router you're using for this particular router uh, the password was blank when I went back into the setup. For bandwidth, you can actually um, either let them have unlimited or you can set it. 2 megabits per second, 8 megabits per second, those are the standards. You can also create a custom one if you have a really high bandwidth. Um, internet bandwidth, you can just set it you know, for whatever you want them to, to use. You can also change it uh, for different times of the day. So again this is a great feature to have especially if you have guests coming over for the holidays and you know you want them on the guest network rather than your personal great feature is the parental control so under the parental control you can set uh different features to be able to um keep people from being able to access uh, restricted websites, stuff that you really don't want uh, kids or family really trying to get into. Um, this is a great feature, and it's primarily on every router I've ever owned, um, but the one on this router has been very, very, very good. One of the top things I loved about this router that I was surprised with, I did not know when I purchased it, was the VPN. You can connect to uh, different VPN servers, different types of VPN servers, um, and it's really, really, really good. Um, if you want to do a little research on VPNs or if you want me to make another video on VPNs, just leave a comment down below. It's a little extensive, um, you know, explaining VPNs and all of that. So I'm not going to get into all that. But if you want to know, just leave a comment below. Under advanced settings, I'm going to go through these really quickly. You have your bandwidth control. Again, this is the same thing. You can limit the bandwidth per device. There's a Tinder app that you can download for iOS and Android to control your, your router remotely. There's a sleeping mode. The LED control that's on the router itself. You can filter a MAC address. It does have firewalls. Another great feature is this IPTV. So on the back of the router, if you connect with a Ethernet cable directly to your, um, your Android TV box, or your, your uh, smart TV, this will help you get optimum performance for your IPTV systems. Static root, DDNS, virtual servers, DMZ host, and universal plug and play. Universal plug and play is sometimes good to have enabled, especially if you game a lot. Um, it it help keep the NAT types open. DMZ, I do not recommend using DMZ as it as it leaves whatever device you have on DMZ host um, completely open to the to the outside world. Um, it's not recommended if you want to have certain ports open. Let's say you're using Xbox One and you want to have certain ports open. There is no port forwarding on this router. There is, but it's not called port forwarding. It's called something a little fancier. It's called virtual server. So if you click on virtual server, you'll see that you can set up different protocols, different WAN ports, LAN ports, and whatever IP address for the internal device you want to be able to access that particular um, uh, port. So like let's say 1.216801, right? Then you want to open up port 20. So you type in... 2020 and let's say you want to set it up on TCP and UDP then you just hit new and it'll create it this is really good again for Xbox it'll allow you to open up all the Xbox ports so that way you can have an open that type and have optimum streaming performance this is system settings uh, in system settings, it really just has the automatic maintenance, which is enabled from factory. It shows you how your system is doing. It saves a log of the system. 
Uh, you can set up remote management. You can back up and restore features. You can do a firmware upgrade. Um, you can reset and reboot. You can change the login password, the LNA, L LAN settings, um, the WAN settings, and time synchronization settings. So that's a quick rundown of how to set up your Tenda AC6 router. Uh, the video went a little longer than I wanted it to, but I wanted to make sure that I got all the details out there for you so that way you can enjoy your new router and have it set up to the fullest capability. If you do have any other questions, because the video could have easily been 30 minutes, if you have any other questions, please, please, please leave a comment down below, um, and I'll definitely answer those comments. Uh, I usually can respond uh, within a few minutes of the actual notification, so if you need it, if you need an answer, if you have a comment, please leave it down below. I definitely get back to you. Again, thank you for watching Fish and Cheese. As always, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Have a blessed day.